जे गेस्ट द विंग्स ऑफ फैशन ब्लो द लैम्प ऑफ इंटेलिजेंस for lighting the tradition loyal lamp on this occasion i would like to cordially invite professor s sri satnaraja the vice chancellor university of jaipur joining with him professor p ravirajan the dean faculty of science dr p ayengaran head department of chemistry dr c patmadas head department of physics dr k vignaruban coordinator ahead dor project professor p balasundaram pillai former vice chancellor university of jaipur we also kindly invite a representative of heads of the department joining with that mrs manisha mithunaraj raj and mr t b jayamaha research assistants the vice chancellor uh, professor sri satnaraja the former vice chancellor and the council member professor balasundaram pille dean of the faculty of science uh, professor ravi rajan heads of the departments director ots uh, senior administrative officer ots uh, maintenance officer of the maintenance branch head of the computer unit a very good morning to you all i am really glad to welcome you all for this important event in the faculty of science the opening ceremony of two research laboratories one is in the physics uh, is named as uh, laboratory for energy conversion and storage and other one in chemistry it's named as chemistry research laboratory uh, so this uh, dor project uh, the proposal writing was started in 2018 in the middle of 2018 the dor development oriented research Uh, in the middle of 2018 uh, the ahead program this accelerating higher education expansion and development project funded by the world bank and administered by the ministry of higher education they called the application in the middle of 2018 and then uh, we joined together some staff in physics chemistry and also uh, another research at the institute national institute of fundamental studies Uh, and two uh, foreign experts uh, one is from the chamas university of technology uh, was uh, alexander matty and the other one is the, from the arizona state university uh, professor kandan so under both of them i worked um, during my masters and the postdoctoral periods um, at chamas and also at the arizona state university then we joined together almost uh, six seven people and wrote the proposal in the middle of 2018 when it took almost uh, one year for the ahead program to complete the review after several steps of evaluation and uh, they sent it to reviewers reviewers sent the reports and then we revised and then they called for a oral presentation in kalampu and we did the presentation and then uh, revised again after um, such a long process of evaluation uh, almost Uh, took one year in the middle of 2019 we got the good news uh, we were funded okay, in uh, 2019 40 million lkr okay, uh, for a three year project and uh, we are really happy because only two projects were funded in the northern province of sri lanka uh, under this uh, dor scheme development oriented research one is at the clinology engineering faculty and the other one is ours in the, in the chemistry and physics uh, collaborating together uh, and our pro- actual title is uh, development of uh, electrolyte double electrolyte and electrode materials for secondary sodium ion and magnesium ion batteries and the uh, short title the batteries bio in lithium ion okay you know th- these lithium ion batteries nowadays used everywhere Uh, the, the first commercialized in 1991 by the Sony Corporation in Japan, 
and now it's the all over. So in, in your mobile phone, your laptop, or in your iPad, or in your digital camera, in your remote devices. So almost all the electronic devices use lithium-ion batteries these days. But uh, initially it was commercialized by Sony in 1991. It's almost 30 years now. But uh, uh, now people are looking at, uh, especially in the R&D level, uh, the batteries beyond lithium-ion because uh, lithium deposits are very rare in the world and uh, the prices of the raw materials are uh, exponentially increased. That's why the, the and even uh, for the past 10 years, after 2010, roughly around 2010, these lithium batteries are um, used in the electric vehicle also. That's a, a lot of consumption of uh, lithium deposits. But uh, say, as far as lithium deposits are concerned, uh, say we could say in mainly in South America and Australia a little bit, and also China. Uh, we could say only four countries having lithium deposits, mainly Chile, Argentina in the South American continent. They are the leading providers, producers, and the other one is Australia and China, a little bit of uh, lithium deposits there. So except these four countries, there are no lithium deposits. Uh, so mainly these uh, South American countries are politically unstable. That's what the uh, people are looking at, uh, batteries beyond lithium ion especially sodium ion batteries, because uh, sodium is everywhere in the, in the ocean or in the Earth's crust, in the form of sodium chloride we have uh, all over the ocean. Okay. Uh, that's why uh, uh, people are looking at uh, batteries of uh, sodium ion batteries, for example, or lithium, uh, so magnesium ion batteries. These are known as the batteries beyond lithium ion, but still these are mainly in the R&D level mostly and there are some commercial batteries available, sodium batteries, not for portable electronic but for uh, stationary applications. Uh, I think I can take this opportunity to talk to you a few words about these uh, sodium batteries and also about the team members working in our group and uh, the type of uh, state-of-the-art instruments we have, we purchased under this grant or we purchased from some other grants earlier from NSF, NRC or TWAS uh, and we have many instruments in physics also in chemistry especially for the purpose of battery research and uh, I think I can talk a few words uh, where, uh, I can take this opportunity to introduce you uh, to uh, tell you a few words about these uh, uh, the instruments available in, uh, in our labs for this uh, purpose. Okay. Uh, this is the research team I already mentioned, uh, myself and uh, Senturan from the physics and uh, Professor Vela Iramuthi and Dr. Sasi Hayes uh, from the chemistry and uh, Dr. Atula Vijayasinghe from the National Institute of Fundamental Studies in Kandy. They recently established uh, one year ago, even not, not less than one year, in, in February. This year, they established National Battery Testing Laboratory at the NIFS. Uh, he is the in charge for the National Battery Testing Facility. They got uh, 50 million funding from some foreign agencies and another 50 million from uh, Ministry of uh, Higher Education. So with the, that uh, total of 100 million, uh, they established a National Battery Testing Laboratory at the NIFS. That's what uh, the Collaborative work with him will be very good, very uh, highly beneficial for us uh, to do the uh, work on uh, sodium and magnesium batteries. These are our collaborators uh, and uh, my advisors during my master's and uh, postdoctoral periods. Uh, uh, at the Chalmers University of Technology during my master's, Professor Alexander Matti and uh, Professor Kannan. Um, I did a postdoc at the Arizona State University. Um, uh, in the USA and uh, Professor Alexander Matic came here to Yafna uh, this, this year in, the, in February uh, to, as an invited uh, talk, uh, say he gave an invited talk at the conference AMSIA 2000, uh, sorry, last year, 2019, Professor Avirajan organized that conference and uh, Alexander Matic came here, he gave a very good talk uh, about lithium batteries and uh, lithium sulfur batteries. Uh, uh, this is the brief introduction about the team and the postgraduate students. Uh, we have currently six students working in the projects. 
um, uh, in sodium uh, batteries or magnesium batteries. It's an infield student, uh, Manisha, Jayamaha and Yadushan uh, and uh, MSc students, Tabeshan, Rajadevi and Vimosha. Uh, we have six students, uh, co-supervised by the staff in physics and chemistry and also in, at the NISS. Uh, yeah, this one I already talked, uh, say as far as lithium deposits are concerned, we could say only four countries producing lithium. Say this is in the 2015 production, Chile and Argentina 11,700 metric ton, 3,800 metric ton, in Australia 13,400 13, metric ton, China 2,200 metric ton. That's what we could say simply. So lithium deposits are mainly in the South America, here. Chile and Argentina, you know, uh, those are politically unstable countries. Uh, that's what uh, people are mainly looking for, batteries beyond lithium ion. And people predict, uh, say by 2050, uh, the lithium deposits will be almost over from the world. Okay, then uh, you think about, say, we have mobile phones, laptops, iPads, uh, all remote devices, all the electric cars, many electric vehicles are running, say by 2050, in another 30 years, the lithium deposits will be completely over because of uh, less amount of deposits and also more amount of consumptions. Uh, say after 2050, there will be no lithium to produce lithium ion batteries. Okay, that's what people started to um, do mainly the R&D works on sodium or magnesium ion batteries. Okay? Say this in the, uh, if you consider sodium ion batteries, in 2014-15, say just five years ago, some milestone happened, okay? Some commercial level batteries uh, were produced, but uh, they are not, in, not comparable to the uh, current lithium ion batteries. For example, this battery, uh, prototype 18650, this is uh, 18650, it's a code word, it's a 6.5 centimeter length, and 1.8 centimeter uh, diameter. This is a, st a standard uh, naming convention used in the batteries. This was produced, you can see a sodium ion rechargeable battery. It's sitting on a uh, heap of uh, so salt, uh, sodium uh, sulfate or some other salts. Okay, this was produced in 2015 uh, by Professor Jean Mary Tarasco. Uh, they have an uh, uh, electrochemical network, RS2 network in France. He's uh, almost uh, one of the uh, leading person in the, in the battery research, uh, almost number one in the world. They produced the sodium ion batteries in 2015, but still in, not in the commercial market. But uh, they found uh, the energy density 90 watt hour per kilogram. Okay. This energy density is less compared to lithium. So you need to have a weaker batteries in, in your mobile phones. Uh, energy density is less, but uh, it is something similar to the, the beginning of lithium batteries in 1991. Okay, this is the beginning of uh, sodium battery, but uh, uh, current lithium batteries uh, have uh, more than 200 watt hour per kilogram. But this is something similar to the beginning of uh, lithium ion batteries. Okay, it was the breakthrough happened in uh, 2015. And another company in, in Sheffield, UK and uh, in Pittsburgh, USA, they produce some sodium ion batteries. These are in the, in the commercial market, even you can buy it online, uh, so you can order it online. This Paradigm is the company name, Paradigm, and uh, this aqueous energy uh, using some aqueous electrolyte, some sodium sulfate dissolved in water, okay, using some aqueous electrolyte, here some non-aqueous liquid electrolytes, okay, again both are liquid electrolytes. They produce these batteries uh, especially for stationary application. You could use, you couldn't use this for electronic devices, water, because the size is large, because the energy density is low. Okay. Uh, that's what they, they produce this, they commercialize, uh, you can buy it in the market, uh, especially in the Europe, uh, in the UK, the paradigm, or in the US, Aquan. Uh, but the energy density is low, that's why the size of the battery is large, you cannot accommodate it in your mobile phone, okay. Size of the battery is large and also uh, leakage problems with, with, with the liquid electrolytes. But still, they are, uh, they are being used in, for stationary storage, energy storage. For example, store the energy from the solar cells or store the energy from the wind turbines. 
to store these intermittent uh, energy resources, um, uh, they are using this, especially in the in the US, this aqua and energy. Okay, uh, and all this breakthrough happened uh, just five years ago. Okay, 2014, 15. From that time onward, uh, this uh, sodium ion battery uh, uh, became uh, more popular. Okay. And that's what more people started to do research works on sodium ion batteries after that. Even we also started to write a proposal in, in 2018 after three years of this uh, milestone or some sort of, uh, sort of milestone. Okay. So if you look at this uh, R&D growth, number of papers published or number of patents filed, uh, in the case of sodium ion batteries, you know, after this breakthrough suddenly increased, say around 2013-14, Number of papers published or number of patents filed, there is an exponential increase uh, suddenly after 2014-15, after this breakthrough of uh, commercialization of sodium ion batteries. Okay? Uh, and uh, this is mainly number of patents, uh, almost half of the patents filed by the Japan, okay? and then uh, United States, and then China, and then United Kingdom, and other countries. Okay? But all together, Totally, the number of patents filed or number of papers published uh, took an exponential increase in the 2014-15 at that time. Okay, that's it all over the world. Uh, we could say that, especially in the R&D level, these batteries became uh, very popular. Uh, with this introduction about these uh, problems with the lithium-ion batteries and the advantages of the sodium-ion batteries. Okay, but the problem with the sodium-ion batteries, uh, they, they are. Uh, the size will be large because energy density will be low and the other thing lithium ions can move easily within the electrolyte between the anode and cathode but sodium ions cannot move because uh, compared to lithium sodium is large sodium ion that's what the mobility or, or somewhat we call uh, ionic conductivity will be low uh, for the sodium ion batteries that that's what charging and discharging time or recyclability uh, and the energy density uh, and the speed of the charging will be less compared to lithium ion batteries. That's what people are doing uh, research works. Okay. Uh, with this uh, uh, brief uh, introduction about these uh, sodium ion batteries, uh, say, uh, I will briefly talk about uh, the instruments uh, we have in the lab. The, this, uh, this is known as a differential scanning calorimeter. Okay. Uh, it's produced by Perkin Elmer in USA. It's the world leading company producing uh, DSC instruments, simply known as uh, DSC. It is almost 10 million uh, uh, rupees. Okay, uh, this, uh, say we got 40 million, uh, 10 million is gone for one instrument. Okay, uh, but uh, here this, uh, we, we, you have seen this in the, in the lab, but uh, we are happy to have this because uh, say in Sri Lanka, in the, in the state universities, all the 16 universities, we are the first one having this uh, instrument, DSC. Okay. So in Colombo, there are DSC instruments in the Silintech. Okay, that's not a uh, government uh, institute. Okay. Say so among all the other state universities, uh, say so we have this instrument. It's not uh, available in uh, in other universities. Okay, uh, but in in the institute, uh, Silintech, they have. Uh, and this is uh, another important instrument we bought uh, under this grant that the Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy, FTIR, uh, is uh, from the Bruker, is a, uh, FTIR, the optical instruments made by Bruker, most of the instruments in the US, is uh, the f almost 5 million, uh, the cost of this, uh, mainly to study the optical spectroscopy of the polymer electrolytes and other electrode materials. And uh, these are the, some of the instruments we already have uh, in the lab in, in physics, uh, impedance analyzer we looked at it, and the vacuum mount, ultrasonic cleaner, and the box sound, magnetic stirrers, and the fume boot, uh, analytical scale, DC supply, desiccators, it's a workstation, uh, these are the instruments bought uh, uh, in, in the physics. And uh, this is in the chemistry, UV visible spectrometer with uh, reflectance mode. And this is with the NIR spectrometer UV visible and the centrifuge and the shaking incubator and the linear shaker and flame photometer and the pH meter. Okay, uh, These are the instruments uh, we have in chemistry for the collaborative work on uh, batteries. Um, 
and thank you very much and welcome you all uh, for this important event. Thanks. Uh, dear respected uh, Vice Chancellor, Professor C. Sakuraya, respected former Vice Chancellor, Council Member, Professor Balsundaran Pindai, the Dean, Faculty of Science, Professor Abhirajan, today's heroes, heroes, Dr. Vikna Ruban, Professor Velai Muthi, Dr. Sasikesh and Mr. Sanduran. Director, uh, OTS, uh, staff, OTS, heads, senior lecturers, technical officers, demonstrators, research assistants, lab assistants, office staff and students. Today we gather here for this groundbreaking event marking the opening of research laboratory in physics and research laboratory in chemistry. I offer my hearty congratulations and best wishes as we mark this significant milestone for two laboratories in two disciplines in the Faculty of Science. Normally, when we get the grant for two or more disciplines, or disciplinary studies. It allows only one laboratory with fully equipped instruments, but this AHEAD grant allows us to open two fully equipped laboratories in two disciplines, chemistry and physics. Of course, the broad-mindedness, good intention, and clever thinking of real needs of beneficiaries pave the way for these two laboratories. They have also shown their good heart by going beyond the usual approaches. As head of the department, I believe passionately in fostering student success. Success that is focused not just on academic excellence but also cultivating attributes that build a more enlightened and democratic dynamic society. Therefore, I appreciate efforts of Dr. Bikna Ruben, Principal Investigator, Professor Vela Ayamuthi, Dr. Sashikesh and Mr. Senduran to foster strong, uh, strong collaboration with international universities and other institutions to sustain the academic and research quality of the Faculty of Science. I assure you that our department will wholeheartedly support all the activities in these laboratories by whatever possible means. Last week, I wrote a letter to the Vice Chancellor I checked that letter five times for the grammar mistakes, spelling mistake, and factual errors. Why I did it? Our Vice Chancellor is expecting perfection in everything. We are very, very much hopeful our university will enter into new era during his tenure. He will definitely help us in all activities. I would like to wish all the successful activities except expected to be carried out in, in these newly established laboratories. Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. We have a Vice Chancellor, Professor C. Sakunaya Sir, and from our Vice Chancellors, Council Members, our Dean, Faculty of Science, Professor P. Ravirayan Sir. Principal investigator, co investigators, head of the departments, director of OTS and staff of OTS, uh, academic staffs of all the faculties and units, head of computer units, uh, students, uh, 
and uh, academic supporting staff. As Dr. As Dr. Ankaran addressed here, we gather here for door-breaking event, marking an open ceremony of research laboratories in physics and, and chemistry laboratories. Actually, this is a milestone made by these investigators, uh, Dr. K. Vikramuvan, uh, Professor P. So Professor B. Velaidamuthi, Dr. Sasikes, and, and Dr. Sindhu. Uh, they have the uh, they have achieved a milestone actually because uh, this kind of research activities is going to rise our uh, university ranking. I would like to emphasize here the effectiveness of the university actually depends on. Uh, these kind of innovative research activities. Um, the exposure, actually these uh, investigator and co-investigator, they gain uh, you know, exposure from overseas. For example, Dr. Vignor Owen, he gained overseas exposure from Sweden and USA. And similarly, Dr. So Professor Velayamuthi, he got exposures from the East University. And Sasik is from Oxford University, Sinduran, he got enough exposure from uh, Belfast, Canterbury, uh, yeah. So this kind of uh, research exposures actually help them to uh, make this my stop. I'm sure that this kind of uh, research laboratory is going to help us, our undergraduate students and postgraduate students to carry out their uh, research activities in this kind of research, uh, the better research. So definitely after doing this kind of research activities, or qualifying for the postgraduate uh, studies, they will they will able to get uh, academic positions uh, in in Sri Lankan universities as well as uh, uh, this qualification will will help them to get another postgraduate qual qualification in overseas countries. I'm sure that uh, this is very very important uh, activity for the science faculty as well as for the other uh, university. So lastly, I would like to accept my um, wishes for opening this uh, huge laboratories in the physics and chemistry department and many more years of excellence in innovating new, um, new things in this kind of research activities. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for your kind words. Now may I invite Professor P. Ravirajan, the Dean Faculty of Science, to address the gathering. Over to you, sir. Our respected Vice Chancellor, Professor Sri Satnaraja, our former Vice Chancellor, Professor Balsundaram and former Bursa, and uh, OTS Director and the staff, and guests of the department, and staff, and students, and RAs, and other non-academic colleagues, and also DR capital days. It's my great pleasure to see this event, witness this event, and uh, you all know that because Faculty of Science has a long research culture, which in fact actually uh, which, in fact, uh, our former professors, Professor Gunaratnam, Professor Mageswaran, Professor Ganesha Lingam, Professor Devirindra Raja, and uh, Professor Dharmaratnam, all laid on a strong platform while, you know, building these, uh, uh, these department buildings, and also they uh, produced this uh, strong curriculum and also Professor Sri Satpuraja also because he has been working here more than uh, four decades. And uh, we in fact actually learned several things from them. So one of the primary duty is in fact teaching, but uh, research also very much important. As a university, because it's not actually tutory or maybe it's not a college, it's a university, so we should generate knowledge. So the other, other entity, you know, it can just disseminate knowledge. But while we are disseminating knowledge, we should actually create knowledge, generate knowledge. 
And at the same time, actually, we shouldn't actually forget our primary duty. But in all this history, science faculty have been maintaining that. And they're maintaining the high standard. So, so honestly, the students' scripts always actually sent outside and then get it moderated and then and then uh, they also do the certain marking and then we are maintaining that uh, that part. And with regards to the research and uh, our former colleagues or maybe our former respected professors actually didn't have this opportunity. And uh, I am actually from the physics department, I can actually, I know very well about the record of the professor Kunaratnam uh, and then most of you doesn't know. He was in fact the person instrumental in discovering that, uh, you know, proposing some theory and one of the uh, noble winner commented this uh, work that, you know, in the world there are 21 discovery that changed the world and for his discovery he actually wrote that because his work is actually the base. He said the brilliant Sloanist he actually didn't know that he's a physicist. He thought that because he's a mathematician. And his thesis in fact actually well cited by everybody. Why I'm saying this here because they because we actually grown up under their care. And uh, they always motivated us. And then other professors, you all know that, you know, Professor Mayaswaran and then Professor Dervendra Raja and then Professor Ghani Sinigam, all actually did very well on the outside while they are doing their postgraduate studies. But when they actually come here, because you know that because due to, due to this 30 years of war, they couldn't actually do any research here, but they actually went on sabbatical leave and then they did. You know that good example is Professor Kansami. He has done a good research work outside and well cited research and also he served in a national committees also, equally for the um, Kumara Vodivir and also the other colleagues also. Then I want to tell that because the, the other uh, generation, I would, I would say that because the person who inspired me to write some proposal was uh, Dr. Jayanathan. He is the one actually first got this like, uh, it's a millions of grants I would say. It's about, at that time actually he got about 10 million, at the time I was actually probationary staff, I was one of the co investigators but he actually wrote that and then he was successful. That is the first grant actually the university got from the national institutions, about 10 million but now it's the worth of maybe 20 or 30 million. But then after that slowly, because we had an opportunity to collaborate with other people and then we got some money. From the NRC, we got more, it's about more than uh, 30 to 40 million NSF and then whenever we actually, whenever any proposal going from Jaffna, you know, they actually see the difference and also we got the grant. And also the, the later for the Dalan one came here and then we got the international grant. That's a worth of 200 million of money. And which has the provisions to purchase high-end equipment like XRDs and also XRD and also some other equipments and also the important thing is actually we can actually send our students to train there because two of our students now in Norway they just reach there and they are now in the quarantine periods for 14 days and then uh, they are doing that so periodically uh, they are actually doing that uh, so periodically we send the students there for the short-term training I am sure that because under this grant and the team will initiate that one also. They will also sign MOUs, MOUs with the institutions. So another one, another grant actually we got with a multi-institutional grant with a collaboration with the National University, University of Peradhaniya, University of Kelaniya, University of um, Ruhunu, and then 250 million worth of equipment. Uh, 250 million uh, rupees and then which has the provision to purchase the equipment and also we got the advanced uh, advanced force microscopy in our laboratory. So now what I am say, trying to say is you know we have now very good uh, laboratories in the faculty. 
to do their material research. AFM, DSC, under this grant we got the DSC and also the uh, UV visible spectroscopy and also the solar simulator and then um, uh, in our department we have so many high-end equipment. I think if you add up all of them, actually the it's about more than 400 million worth of money we won. It's great to see that because this is the first one, actually the two department actually call order and then they um, won the grant. Because it's highly, this was highly complicated grant. The, the university only two, uh, two group actually got that. And as a dean of the faculty, I'm very pleased that because they actually got this grant. And also we, it's overnight actually you can't actually do things to write a proposal. You know, years and years actually you need to dream of it, write a proposal, sometimes actually get it direct, uh, you know, rejected. That's happened, right? And always that's happened. And also always, and other demand is actually always the funders asking that. When are we going to have the product? That's the main problem actually. I, I am sure that because this group also have, because I also personally have the problem because I also once, uh, you know, got some grant uh, more than four or five times. Actually, the secretary of the NRC is always asking Ravi Rajan, when are you going to install the solar cell, you know, in, in the roof of their office? Solar is everywhere, but our one is actually we do that for the flexible one and then build out using that. So they are also actually doing this uh, battery research. That doesn't mean that actually overnight we can actually get the battery, but they will actually give a good contribution towards making that. Because the Japanese there, they can actually make things. So here, we scientists, so physicists and then uh, chemists, we do the fundamental things. The factors affecting that solar, uh, affecting the batteries performance. And what are the new innovative way we can actually do? So we can maybe produce publications. That is important for the, as far as the university is concerned. As you all know that, the university ranking is uh, mainly depend on the research output of the university. Number of paper published, not in the predatory journal, but in the high index journal. And also number of MOU sign that also will come. They should actually link you know, our university actors should be in their website. Then only we will actually get some language. I am sure that because I am confident that because there is a young dynamic team, they will they will have a good uh, contact with them. So it's better you formalize them, get a MOU. I am actually serving as a direct uh, international collaboration unit. I have been actually contacting with these uh, people outside. And I'm sure that because they will actually establish this MOU, I think the next uh, ceremony that will be, you know, they will inaugurate some MOU with the other university. I'm, I'm sure that Dr. Vitnor Rowan will do that because uh, he has collaboration with Sweden and also maybe Arizona State University. I'm sure that uh, 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 Dr. Professor Velayana Muthi also has contact with the uh, uh, University of Liverpool and also this uh, because Simon, Professor Simon and uh, and also Raja Professor Raja Paksa uh, and also Dr. Sasikis also have contacts with the, uh, his uh, uh, senior his, his uh, supervisors. I'm sure that because they will establish or they will actually try to sign and more you and more than that actually we have a good facilities. I am sure that because they will give access to all the research, not the old research, the research students who wants to do that. That's also very, very, you know, very much important, but with a limited usage. But because just in case if they broke the equipment, then, uh, you know, it's very difficult to repair it. But I think I'm sure that because they, they, they will actually allow the, almost all the material research people and also from the, our vice chancellor also said that because even the city medicine people also can, you know, do that. I'm sure that they will actually do that. I wish all the research uh, grantees, I know that how painful it because I know that I wrote some few proposals. It's not that easy, but they actually succeed, uh, succeeded. And then uh, at the same time, actually, 
they will actually in parallel actually they go with that academic duties also thank you very much thank you sir for being with us and for your kind words now may i invite professor sv sakunaraja the vice chancellor university of jaipur to address the gathering over to you sir ஆனந்தமாய் என் அறிவாய் அமுதமாய் வானந்தமான வடிவுடையாய் மறை நான்கினுக்கும் ஆனந்தமான சரணார விந்தம் தவளுமுக காணந்தும் ஆடனங்காம் என்பதான் முடிக்கண்ணீர் ஸோ எவ்ரி ஒன் வாண்ட் டு பி இன் எ ஜாய் people say enjoy no no it's joy joy come from knowledge so in simply they say such is anandam sit me knowledge ananda you know ananda is a sanskrit word in singhali student can understand so everyone want to be in ananda so ananda come from knowledge is a ancient wisdom so faculty science what is science we talk about details we got there the right philosophy then only you will keep acting i know even principal knows i tell i tell in the student be joy 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 how do you become joy so the knowledge brings joy clarity brings joy contentment brings joy so in this regard so in in our people in ancient times they such is anandam so anandam means sit must be there sit means the knowledge the universe is a knowledge center nothing else so in this knowledge center some people they think some pretend is a primarily teaching because by act is a teacher agree so you train people so you produce graduate so how can you teach knowledge unless you create knowledge so what are you going to teach you going to teach my son what i learn is outdated knowledge because knowledge is always in the ascending path is expanding exponentially the period of doubling of the knowledge is halving you know you all learn in the chemistry half lifetime you know the mass half in a constant time similarly the knowledge is expanding the period of doubling is halving so the what i learn today maybe in 20 years time double maybe in 10 years time it will be in the four times even five years time it will be in the 16 times it's exponentially growing so here this is our dharma dharma means okay i come to science science is basically is a organization of knowledge nothing else science means is a organization of knowledge i know the kanaratna and all people are here palasubramanian then there is a wisdom knowledge bring wisdom also wisdom is a organized form of life i know our faculty board yesterday people were boy boys three so their life is not organized they have knowledge but they don't have wisdom that's a so many quarrels no i am telling today i am telling philosophically people are division some people are missing here because they don't their chemistry is not working nothing else their chemistry is not working so knowledge wisdom wisdom organized form of life no do it organize otherwise it's all go to mess one day they will burn this people get heart attack stress stress 
you know 40 million you are talking about today i know there is a team here managing the head so i tell a story in a flower garden is owned by a master the owner ajama prabhu there are so many servants they actually fertilize the garden they irrigate the garden they do the weeding but they are with very working laymen then the harvesting time come people look for roses and so many other flowers so they ask the master whether they could pick these things yeah he enjoys and he say okay permission granted do enjoy these flowers while this scenario goes on in the background these servants they have been working every day in the flower garden they enjoy themselves because they satisfied although there is no recognition that's what i see raja vigagan and vijayendran here ganagaratnam charles tabodaran these people when they were writing this hctc head project uh, they hardly hardly had any support i know that not only me and amis and all that hctc and then earth project right this has been going on i am saying they is not today celebration one side so the 40 million project we are celebrating actually ahead brought i check with charles again 2 billion ahead brought 2 billion so many phd training so many english language training enhancement so many things we had addressed soft skill expansion labs are put but people are not coming and enjoying it similarly this planet earth i don't know in the science or all the exploration even hubble telescope where you are talking about spectroscopy meters you are going inside what is happening even people are doing outside all the telescopes are flying they haven't seen any planet like this is a lady the mother she has everything even just today i'm only i had a, a couple walapala i don't know how it comes <laughs> which laboratory is brought in what a delicious so in earth you have aquatic things you have terrestrial things the one day i was in a german tech near to the clinology technology i went there they invited me as a guest for one day celebration i am a technology dean i went there the germany the tech they put a the, uh, sort of uh, their motto this is a germany is a land of idea germany is a land of idea the best cars best equipment best medical equipment make scanners no resources no harbors because university people they go to different different level and produce even bad technology the germany came in very late than us and uk they have now 5000 biotech companies in germany you understand so our people actually we go to the middle and burn out due to some reason but i see uh, so when i go to german tech i don't know what to speak there i saw food technology automobile technology construction technology we have we have also had that we were imitating but german tech was very reputed then after thinking i was th- thinking myself what to speak then i went to earth you know whether this all technology what do you do is always in the nature today they they so a spectra uh, that's a the fourier set fourier is a mathematician fourier set the source of discovery source of discovery is the nature so i always believe in that when i go to old scientific forum i always think by where is it is because fourier said that the fruitful source of discovery he put adjective 
fruitful source of discovery is the nature so anything you do is always there so i went to germany then food technology that technology this technology then i was thinking myself where to find this in the nature construction technology then i thought in the earth there are two things i know maybe it's not in the syllabus i am talking the two things are terrestrial and aquatic and kabilan terrestrial and aquatic <laughs> so more aquatic things than terrestrial thing two third is the earth is water so more aquatic things than terrestrial but there is no construction technology no kitchen technology no food technology no technology everything no bus no no universities no schools no playgrounds all are happening the mammals are the sea mammals are one day in indian ocean another day in australia they are enjoying themselves unless we go and put our rollers there so the life is set like this but in the human beings we are like a dogs for a dog night kadaya nai ne unda ella all the saints are singing they call us as a dogs because dog need the master otherwise it can't survive dog need a master otherwise it can't hunt it can't climb it can't cook so do you see the straight dog only maybe our municipality is giving them a avenue that they don't collect the rubbish so the street dogs survive i really happy am <laughs> because where do they go for food similarly human beings there is no ready made thing for us but we are given this the six apartment that should be created knowledge knowledge is our guru actually lord is realized as a knowledge the god the the supreme is the most knowledgeable actually knowledge is the jnana the knowledge is the thing is there given to us so that should be prepared kitchens we prepared so many things today i want to finish it off i don't want to go like these people so i see the assembly here lot of team work for this the same team work for htc more or less our generation and big brother vignesh and myself work for earth i don't know earth time you were there or not earth time meena was there no you were there and tab also there in earth time so the project came in earth 2004 since that time there are it's like a boon i think at the time kanaratnam sir was a sab in 2004 you were there no sab and uh, from that time now you in extended service so you have been extending let me finish this let me finish this so science faculty is a place where we organize knowledge that's what they were trying to do why this instrument i saw that they are going to do so much of uh, properties of the material is a big probably the material people so they want to measure and see and they need the instruments so they want to lock this knowledge somewhere that are the papers locking the knowledge so who is going to investigate about us the novel surendran doing for dengue and mosquito is a is not a is a is not a problem of uk and uh, sweden is our problem so we have to address this entomology problems are tropical countries problems so we have to address both i don't think uh, american or chinese going to do about these things unless they want to sell some drugs they do this similarly our materials titanium or whatever plenty available in this country because i am the board of chairman of the physical science i listen these things when the, these people come and defend for the mphil and all that the project so these thing we had to do they brought the equipment and they want to lock in so that is called the publication so here okay now i want to finish it up again i tell you the ethics of this uh, research so knowledge center for academic accountability so 60 65% of my time should go for teaching the training the people then 25 to 30% should go for research or research collaboration or research management or research you know whatever 
project writing or help you anything and other thing go for dissemination of community extension service so ladies and gentlemen this you know we do all this research i told i i began my talk with anand joy if you want to bring joy to the people if you want to bring joy to the people that is the quality of life i don't want to stress the importance of quality of battery brings a quality of life nowadays you know everywhere battery you know in my body i know there is a battery that's said that my body temperature is maintained in 98.4 there is a jodi there that battery is a different battery there is a different battery is there otherwise if battery off then the no time our body become cold that cold swan is inside of my cell like a computer the cmos battery is always giving the energy even when you shut off so here let me finish uh, again with the philosophy so if you bring joy somebody has to make sacrifice to bring joy in my life the parents made sacrifice to bring joy in my life my teachers made sacrifice to bring even today my occupational joy my wife makes sacrifice washing my clothes and doing lot of things without sacrifice there is no joy that should newton einstein they are not very successful in running their families like you do you know oxford people are clever they come by bicycle <laughs> they nas for park now people are stressing when i going to a car park i'll give in muttavali so you park it and come Oxford is a cycle city, so they did sacrifice. They brought joy to other people. Okay, when you go to sacrifice, that's a dharma. That's a dharma. So dharma support existence. So the scientists support existence. Today we are working very hard to bring this. What do you call this uh, corona? Uh, the injection what do, you, what do you call this vaccine yeah so many labs are running day and night here our university get locked down at 4 o'clock even the even non corona time when i was in the laboratory in heriot ward 24 hours computers are running you we talk about professor gunaradnam in imperial when he was a professor the computer science is a chemistry department every valve every branch is made by valves so today computers are shut down so when i was in australia in a, in a, in a company telstra i was working part time so i went for grape jar a grape jar ship they said the new boss came and he said every computer should be running 24 hours here every individual has a computer lock it in their room and go they ask for printer only one print out a month so this is our nature it's a waste of money ladies and gentlemen when you go to dharma support the existence so vidya dharma is the highest dharma not any other dharma so vidya dharma is the highest dharma even vidya dharma dissemination knowledge or teaching no no the research is the most challenging as is done in solitude and research there is no guarantee that you succeed so many failures come in a research you may not even get published that result so it's very frustrating also for that you need a very consolidated mind and a commitment so here the head team here uh, our tabodaran he brought 100 million i know how the hardship he had we almost winning in the site visit time no right our people are only you know okay there's no picking on the past so now you, now you understand this young people uh, in the development oriented research is their effort they brought it so the second generation of students are far better than the first generation us 
in research. Now I acknowledge this. I acknowledge this. Ravi Rajan or Vikna Ruben, Vailaya Murthy and all these people, whatever you do in your PhDs and all that. Even I saw Prince had a patent when you were doing the PhDs. Today in the UBL, the first patent application I lodged uh, last week, a Nobel and the engineering collaboration. First patent application from University of Jaffna. It's coming from UBL, University Business Link. I continuously working on this. One day I made a presentation with eight people, then the two people get collaborated there. In the presentation itself, so we made a patent sheet. So this thing will happen. The third generation will be better. I hope my son will be better than me. There's no doubt about it. Because they, they, their environment and their, you know, the out-of-box thing. Because they, they see the world as a globalized world. So in the Vitya Dharma, supporting existence, the knowledge creation. I told you, science faculty is a place of organizing knowledge. So cre without creation of knowledge, how, what do you organize? So it's important. I think I congratulate all these young men uh, for their sacrifice. Because the dharma and sacrifice are two sides of a one coin. So it's a big dharma. They are doing it. Again, I finished it off. The symbol in the university of Japna, there's a bull. People call Nandi and Saiva and all that. No, it's a bull. The bull and Lord Shiva are related. Because according to some Hindu dharma, the bull is a symbol of dharma, symbol of sacrifice. When the bull grow, they do fascination. Even it can't enjoy sex life. Right? Then the bull throughout the life carry, carry, carry. Pull the block out. Pull, 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 carry, carry, carry. So you see its shoulder is, is, is heavy. Right? Bunch. So that's a bull. So bull, when you go to Hindu temples, the bull is sitting there. Uh, you know, when you go there, you salute the bull. Because you see that Dharma is supporting all our existence. That bull, the three legs are almost bended. Only in one leg it stays. The bull is like this, sitting like this. Only one leg is in a smart position, all other bended. Today in the Kali Yuga, the whole world is corrupted. From politics to the academics. Today fake publication is a big issue of the Vice Chancellor. And we, I had to wait, spend a lot of time on that. Just to, the honesty gone. Integrity gone. How far gone? The bull says only 25% dharma exists. If you take four lawyers, only one is genuine. If you take four teachers, only one is genuine, three corrupted. Similar scenario also in the university academics and everywhere. So now I am happy from HETC I am telling, AHED I am telling, ERK I am telling, the same team I see here, you are supporting, you are in the 20 person. You are supporting the existence, you are supporting the Dharma. This is my takeaway message. 20 person only Dharma exists nowadays. You know? So we had to make our, all our determination endeavor to be in that 20 papers. So not to worry about the wrongdoers, not to pick up on this. And final message is, you are good at knowledge, bring wisdom, apply wisdom, enjoy wisdom, don't burst. You burst in no time, but they hurt all the people for months, years, even burn down all all the good things. So in the science faculty also I humbly request whatever issue comes let us handle professionally and settle and also I congratulate all these uh, principal investigators uh, Vikna Ruben 
and uh, Velayada Murthy, Sudarshan um, and Sasigis, uh, they are dynamic uh, and Sasigis in particular, he revived the spectroscopy. What is that spectroscopy? We bought uh, in the STDP project and uh, Bangkok, uh, that was shut down and uh, that was not operating for a long time. So he revived that, I saw today. That uh, that's another million project that uh, came in 2008 or 9, 2004. That has been idling. Now it's working. Today I'm very happy. And ladies and gentlemen, I used to do uh, border survey verification in the physics lab and chemistry lab. So I know most of the equipment myself. I touch and verify. So today I'm very happy that you have a state of art equipment. And again, I humbly request you. You may, you should give access to all the people to enjoy this uh, uh, utility of this equipment. That is the most important thing. Uh, thank you for patient listening. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Airbnb, that was our vice chancellor, sharing his take home message with us. A good initiative deserves a good end to deliver the thanking note for the dignitaries of today's session, may I invite Professor K. V. Lagdamurthy, team member, ahead DOR project. Over to you, sir. The Vice Chancellor, former Vice Chancellor, Dean Faculty of Science, heads of the departments, academic and non-academic staff members, staff members of the OTS office and maintenance branch, my dear students, very pleasant good morning to you all. I have the privilege to express our sincere gratitude to our chief guest and others who are present here. First of all, I have to thank the World Bank for the generous grant which made this long cherished dream of our team a reality. Then I would like to thank our chief guest Professor S. R. Sarkaranaja, Vice Chancellor, University of Jaffna, and former Dean of the Faculty of Science. Sir, in the midst of your many pressing duties that leave you a little time, you have spent a good part of the morning with us today. To you, sir, we are much grateful, and on behalf of our grand winning team, I express our sincere gratitude for your presence and for the illuminating talk. A big thank you for the Dean, Faculty of Science, Professor P. Ravi Rajan, who honored the function with the inspirational thoughts. I must mention our deep sense of appreciation for former Vice Chancellor and Council Member, Professor P. Balasundaram Pillai, for his kind presence here. I would like to express our sincere thanks to Dr. P. Angren, Head of the Department of Chemistry, and Dr. T. Padmadas, Head Department of Physics. I must thank to Dr. P. Angren again for providing all sorts of assistance to conduct this event in a successful manner. I also extend my sincere thanks to the staff members of the Department of Physics and Department of Chemistry for their enormous cooperation to success this event. Well, ladies and gentlemen, opening laboratories like this cannot happen overnight. The wheel started rolling a year ago. It required planning and bird's eye view for details. In that sense, we were very fortunate enough to be backed by a team of very motivated, talented, and dedicated staff from OTS office and the maintenance branch. I also wish to express my gratitude to the director, OTS, Dr. E. Y. A. Charles, and uh, senior administrative officer, Mr. Kanagaratnam. I take this opportunity to thank DR Capital Works and Planning, Mr. Raja, Ms. N. Raja Bisahan, Works Engineer, Engineer K. Kadamba Silan, Works Superintendent, Ms. M. Vijayendran, Works Supervisor, Ms. M. Gobinath, for their immense support for opening these laboratories. And last but not the least, our beloved staff members for making this function as a grand success. Thank you very much. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.